Um, good evening. Um, welcome to Disco Elysium. Don't call me Ted. I am, uh, just picking up exactly where I left off. I'm still really confused. A lot of shit I need to do, and I don't know if I'm on, like, a time limit or something. I remember using... I need to get back to the car because that's going to get me this and this. Alright. So, um, am I done here? I don't remember. Is naked but for a pair of underpants and white boots. No, I'm good here for now. I need something to cut that shit down with. What's this? I can level anything up. Hm. Couldn't have hastily done that, but I could revert, huh? Just because I want to see what else we got. I mean, it's the same exact shit. But I feel like I should get some motor skills. You hear and smell everything. Let no detail go unnoticed. Fuck it, right? Set. This man is about to get, uh, intuitive. Alright, I can run. Can I just... I... I, um... Also, I forgot to mention... I got copyright claimed. No action was taken. Which makes me wonder what the point of... Where's this car? Makes me think like what the point of uh, copyright claiming it is now. Here we go, that's a car. Kinda. And I wonder if it's this background music that I thought was fine. I've heard it many times on YouTube videos. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that toyed from oblivion. The Caprice <laughs> Kinema motor carriage. Oh, uh, you don't think that's my boy, Kim? In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook. A I don't know, it is his car. I just don't remember his name. Frequency tableau lights up and the green button labeled Prime Line. The thing is, I don't know my name either, so like, how would I get my. You hear something. The soft how would I get my ship back? Oh, I'm gonna. Cast far and wide, nice. That feels good. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, just now. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st precinct here. I'm putting him on. <laughs> Go, come in, Delta 10. This is Firewalker copy. Alice Dimitri, 
Observe officer. What's the number? Got it. I'll contact the ICP database immediately. Call nice. Tomorrow. Quick and easy. Hopefully they'll have dug up something useful by then. The International Collaboration Police, ICP. ICP. The Isoleri Law Enforcement Service. A crown jewel in the Mole Intern Diadem. Alongside EPIS and the coalition government. I wasn't paying attention. What? I don't care. Um, I'll probably learn, if it's significant enough, I'll learn it again. I have something I need to report. Ten two ten five. This is forty first. Come in over. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. If the man uses relay code, you got this. You're a cop. And cops know relay code. Ten four message received. Ten five relay message. What's your status? Over. Oh, I'm just reporting. State your message, sir. I need to report my badge missing. Ten nine. For message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 1022 the captain. Over. I wish I knew these codes because I, I I wouldn't doubt if they're legit. I know obviously 104 is like yeah. Is it him? What does he want? <sighs> he says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? This is communication officer Jules Pidieux, sir. You mean your partner? Over. What is he saying? <coughs> He's asking who you are. I'm his goddamn partner. <laughs> It's your partner, c'est the light officer Bitmar, sir. Over. Did he lose his memory along with his fucking dad? Is he a friend? Who knows? Who lost his badge? Who the hell is this guy? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? Dick Mullen. It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're, They're laughing at you. I'm just stop. This is serious. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs uh, sarcastically. Thank you. God damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Satellite officer Vikmar is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Mullen dicked us. <laughs> Ten four, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me. Mac, come here. Got to hear this. Dick Mullen lost his badge. What's going on? Super Cuphead lost his badge. He wants his what now? His badge. He lost Super his Cop. Badge. That's what I tried to call myself earlier. <laughs> he asked you to please stop saying he lost his badge. Why? Did he find it? Oh my god, can we just... Sergeant Thorson was wondering if you found your badge yet. Oh. Um, you don't have a combat. Sorry. It's hard to think like this. He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for it. Ten nine, come again. I didn't get that. Over. No heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him. 
ask him if he lost his gun too. Oh my god. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun. Oh fuck. I don't even wanna roll it. I want I kinda need a gun. <laughs> No, of course not. I, d I didn't lose my, my fun gun. Fuck. <laughs> he says he didn't lose his gun. Or his fun, whatever that means. This is... Ask him to describe it. His gun. Not his fun. Just the gun will do. <laughs> Satellite officer McLean requests a description of your weapon. Over. Oh. Request a description, huh? We'll give him one. Describe the blasm gun. We've got cooling vents along the front and hydrogen flat city. Yeah. Kim, what are you packing? Then I'm come again, please. Over. Periwinkle blue. I'm going to need to put you on speaker for a second. Over. In contact, it detonates with the power of a dying star, erasing every living thing from existence. Oh, and did I mention it dripping with sexy blue plasma? The officer is describing his genitalia in exaggerated terms. Over. Host in heaven. Kind of. Oh, oh my, I can't. <laughs> this isn't really a laughing matter. Mac can face a giant of Coco Nur by himself. But this go in, I didn't pitch his pad. <laughs> oh, I, I can't. Fuck. He lost his ass. He still got his wiener. Oh my god. Oh man. Can we just going to drop it? Ask him. <sighs> Sergeant Orson here. Wondering if you are still in possession of your genitalia. Over. <sighs> Do I retaliate? It sounds like I am part of, like I am actually a cop. I'm feeling a little bit more confident about that. Not completely, but a little bit more. I'm, gonna, I'm never going to entertain this. Even if I know these guys, fuck them. It's almost going on for too long. You flick off the switch, severing the connection. That did not go well. I guess the important thing is that you followed protocol and reported your lost item. Did we need anything else here? A metallic drawer slides out. Of Wonder why, what I would need from here. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools. Like He's clearly a little protective of his tools. <laughs> but what can you do? Work is work. Chain cutters, a pry bar, or a flashlight? I'm going to go with a flashlight. Weatherproof and well made. Police issue. Blue lets you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. Why would I take all his shit? That's so rude. The pull-out toolbox slides back until the white suede feels luxurious under the touch and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's There's no use pressing the heat button. It won't start without the ignition key. Translation. We're not alternative translation. Don't even think you can drive my MC. I'm just trying to move on. Damn. What do we got going on over here? Tectonic force, huh? Alright, who are you? Let's just start talking to everybody. I am a candle 
Tommy Lee home. Okay. Simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. From another planet. Hey there. It's a jam, my man. It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Upon days. You think that's a thing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's official. He too agrees. This is the antechamber of the afterlife. Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes and mazout. I don't think it's smart to assume these things. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. Behind the love, however, a touch of sorrow. So tell me, what do you need? He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. Huh? <laughs> oh. No, I ain't got any money. They don't want to pay for unfinished work. The bosses, man. I think that might be a part of this hell loop is I'm never going to be able to afford yeah, it sure the... good for me. Or you. I'd spare a coin or two for a city cop down in his luck. If I had saved four myself. Oh, high grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Time to arrest him. Relax. He's merely joking. <laughs> ha, no, I'm joking, my man. Found runs a nice clean business. This haul of cargo is mostly sporting goods. You know, tracksuits and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grad in the off season. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. Not unless they've illegalized sports equipment while I was on the road. This rockin' beauty. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. A motor lorry, also called a camion, on Caillou and neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up enough to be some sort of found rust bucket. Maybe the A6. Good eye, my man. Yup, she's an old one, but reliable. Me and her spent a long time. Damn, encyclopedia comes in clutch to uh, just be the randomly. What? A little touch of sadness beneath his cool. He thinks he spent too long in this lorry. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. Ease into it. Don't go too far. This seems like a personal matter. <laughs> I'm okay, man. Just the jams got me down. The fumes, the chemical rainbows, the tarpaulin stretched on the frames and the dull engines off. Maybe the full-on direct approach wasn't correct. Damn, it's tricky business looking into someone's eyes. It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks, workers got a blockade set up, making demands, no way in or out. Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? Forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like, a strike negotiator type. They'd know what's up. Ah, yes. From the Wild Pines. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. ka -ching. He doesn't blame them, but he's not on their side. Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. 
I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. Don't be a stranger. What's new in here? What's that? No, I got a tool. Flashlight. I don't need it on right now. Anything for that? Two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, like two baby crocodiles. Good, they're balanced, comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now. I didn't realize that those things were like thought bubbles above me I thought that was like a compass can I go in there now close for the entire winter oh please use main entrance to look around or something everything is out on the shelves what's that magazine she's reading you mean this this is pop stars it's got like famous people in it it's not for sale she pops her raspberry flavored bubblegum and the lieutenant frowns at you before turning to the clerk with an apologetic half smile. I don't know. Frit? I think they think that the extra tea makes it funkier. The story goes that normal Fritta with two teas, a men's workwear shop in Vredefort, was already taken. So when Fritta retail. Um. Okay, I'm not really supposed to be chatting to any- Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... Not really. Um, no. I didn't know him at all. I don't know, really... Lol. No one decided to take care of it, I mean... I guess they kept saying it was a crime scene, so just don't touch it, and everyone was just like, leave it alone. Um, I don't- No need to worry. It's just standard procedure for us to ask around. If you okay. Uh-huh. Bitch. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals ten hmm? Oh, that's the tear machine. It's a machine for tear. You know, you find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, and put it in the machine, then it gives you money. Mm. You need a 
bag, I guess. We used to have some, but we gave them all out, so. Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure there are some out there. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The I don't feel like entertaining this bitch. She's kind of just rude. Okay. Just gonna run out. I'm wearing the gloves still. Yeah, so those are just little inner thoughts, I guess. Relevant to what's going on. I just never... This display of weakness may appeal to older women with a stronger maternal instinct, but it is a liability. Jean Luc, his body is betraying his degeneracy pretty hard. Maybe you can ask him to leave. That is precisely the negligence that has led you to succumb to unruly. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Alhul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the ham sandwich race is waning. Show him the ham still got it. Does this remind you of someone? The guy down there? Do I ask for help or do I try and I can't I don't think I can intimidate him fully but he does kind of look like a hoodlum I don't think he would 
adhere to the police threat any more than he already has. Begging for help. Attempting to pass fear for cooperation. How far the Occidental Hablo group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful day. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy. You dominated lesser cultures like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous. You will be superseded. Isn't that? It is, baby, yeah. There is a button right behind you, just out of reach. It must be the one that opens a door to the harbor. This man is not budging. Let's hope his superiors inside are more cooperative. It is my task to keep the degenerate drunks from entering the arbor. I'm not gonna say your people. That's fucked. We still need to get into the harbor. We need help with the tree situation. Last we saw, your race was being enough with this begging. You should leave, bring your troops to the Seminan Island and to Boogie Street, and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, the walls will be lined with bottles of all wool. Your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art, and your microcephalic skull. There may be a peaceful solution to this. We could internalize Mejahed's race theory. He would take you in one of his home. The best. I might as well give it a shot. Ask what kind of races there are first. Classification is called to this stuff. of pederasty which one do you need in the case of i knew start worse go best right vile cauldron everyone does you need to first learn about the a and b to appreciate the depravity of the chimeric races yeah i mean otherwise just won't make any sense. Yes, it would seem nonsensical. Of course. Tipe B are the unheroic races, amorphous non competitors of the great race. The Koikos and the Vacholier, they are mud colored people. The Koikos of Graal, Yugo, Jimsk, Chest et al. are what you would call white officer in a suspect description. Yes, to an untrained eye, the Koiko appear white and pinkish, like a hand sandwich. But look into their eyes and you will see. They are of an indistinct color, and so is their skin. Un Pinkness is a racial quality that has to be earned through centuries of advanced ballistic warfare and cultural domination. Bad people have undergone for drinking, al rule and smoking the 
regenerate the bunker and we're eating potato eating potato this man is against eating potatoes I don't know what to say about that. The only thing they like more is divided into microscopic ethno states, like political amoeba. Wouldn't even one be four ethno states? I wasn't paying attention what either of these words mean. State will cover the entire remaining planetary crust uninterrupted from Holy Seminine to the Boreal Plateau of Katla. Its leaders will be the genetic epitome of the Simeni and Aryobajit stock elected by nature, not the base in our spoilage called Demo. I heard a thing that um, every 20 minutes or so I should look away and focus on something a little further away so I don't get any eye strain. I don't know if that's an actual thing, but Tom Scott said it, and um, I I trust trust. I would trust Tom Scott with my life. I think really the problem is that uh, the, this pink light is on in the background and it's just giving me like a, I don't know. We'll keep it going, who cares? Two makes to no right from wrong. You tried your degenerate little revolution. It was the single greatest failure humans in our 82,000 year history on this planet. Is it 82,000 years that we've been recording history? You have very little idea of what is happening, but that seems a little odd. Mysteries of the people of this planet are a tragedy that has played out countless times over, like a fever dream of skin, hair, and bone. Wake up, my chess player. The revolution came to Ravachol from Gra. The revolution is fatal, familial. A hereditary prion condition passed from the Koiko to the Occidentals. Enough of Tibet mediocrity. That was all about Type B. Those are the Simonese, the Areopagit, and the Occidentals. A receding genetic pool has led the mound on reprehensible street parades. In mound cities, you know them by the names of their nation states. I'm getting a little tired of talking to this dude. My people simply call them Mahun is a derogative term for first world people of Gotbolian descent. They do not all have eczema. Also, people of Katla, like the Suru and the Uhu, are much more lactose. They do not all have eczema. 
Very cool. In some municipalities, but that's that's good for not all of them. Green, orange, and even yellow tassels have also been seen. The mound are proof that you can have too much occidental racial purity and tassel centric culture. In the Vesper times and Messinians of Vesper and Messina, the ancient meteorans of Meteo by the Golden Pisantic Sea. I need to try a different font. And even the North. Steiner. All have tip A rates from the other large mundial civilization. The mask are too yellow and on the edges to count as a overproduction of s Oh good, I can do it. I don't know. I don't even think this will work exactly, but for the shot. Proven by the mound and the mask, Occidental Tip A is in retro. Tip A. Seminese and the Areopagite are on the ascent. The Areopagites are sleek, long headed. The Seminese are powerful, mesomorphic. The former is an immutable projector, unchanged since the Super Isola of Perica. Ancient brain rest in their slender skulls. The latter is perfected and adapting. Together they form the Simeno Areopagite or Simeopagite Super Race. That is all. Nature was not capable of it more. Okay, so now what? Tips. A museum of fame, chimeric experience. It would be cruel to entertain us. You understand nothing. To solve the great race enigma, you have to first ask yourself, what is the race enigma? You have not even worded the mystery, let alone solved it. You need to internalize what you have heard. Am I just am I about to become racist? Does not come instantly. Yes, I'll do that. I cannot possibly imagine what else we have to discuss. Your love for disco music and venereal disease? Oh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma much deeper than that there must be some friction there he's keeping it well hidden however the 
Mr. Clare is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront polycultable capital. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. Jam, individualism. You have gotten these ideas from degenerate youth culture, have you not? You have picked them up. Oh, I gotta say the word disco. Now I need to find the word Elysium. Seminese people invented disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese reign. What you need is to come to terms with extinction and never get in that dead body down from the tree. Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. I am not like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic grid. You exhibit forward projection of the jaw, indicative of schizophrenia and sexual inaccountability. From a purely aesthetic standpoint, the dimple in your jaw makes you look like a baby. This is not craniometry. It is impossible to see any more of your bone structure. It is covered in the ravages of Alhul. From what remain of your features, I can see fleshy lips. This leads me to conclude you are not a police officer. You are a common criminal. An offspring of murderers and sailors from Sur la Clé and Vesper. And possibly even the degenerate. Your racial heritage is uninteresting. It is the same as all rep I think this racist is better than the last. But the next racist will be the really good one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Kim. That will be the <laughs> he will grant us three wishes. <laughs> Your pedomorphic friend has quick wits, a protruding occiput, and an indented zygomatic bone. The bitch does not flinch. Don't be talking shit about Kim. My boy stands a little bit more than six feet away in 2019. Should keep him close. The congenital defect of farsightedness. There is nothing fun. I cannot possibly imagine what else we have. Further shot. Your love for disco music and venereal disease. How did this happen? Your little fist is in his giant hand, and he squeezes it. It hurts. You must be out of your mind. Degenerate drunk. Say it. I am a degenerate alcoholic. Whatever, Good. dude. Now leave before you humiliate your homoerotic organization. Whatever. Whatever you say, boss. What to do? I mean, I can keep exploring. Oh, I, I can talk to my boy. Kim, what you got? What you got? Hello? I'd appreciate it if you didn't force us into situations where I may have to shoot random civilians. I'm not even sure the one bullet my chamber holds would even print that hurt.
Let's think of something else. No, no. You should do it again. It's the last thing <laughs> you'll be expecting. No. The inner voices in my head are not all out to help me. That's just fantastic. Just what I need to be worrying about right now. Stickers. The driver has adorned his face with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep. Large ashtrays. A book with ragged edges catches your notice. The front cover features a large muscular man. The craziest nationalist paraphernalia. Not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. Lucky, yes. This guy's proud of who he is. Drapes it all over his machine. Alright, Kim. Let's go embarrass some racists. Oh, here he is. Yeah. Looking for something? Uh, it's about biological determinism. Not the most popular topic nowadays, with the coalition in charge and all. You might want to change the topic. That is, bury your head under the sand like common sheep. I'm not the only one. Look, I've read books. The science of racial theory has all been proved. Even if some people don't want to accept it. People who studied these things say that you and me are superior by design. So, uh, naturally, we Occidentals should be in charge. Obviously, you can see the mirror. Open your eyes. Haven't you noticed something different lately? An unfortunate downturn, maybe? Huh? When members of the superiority cease to believe in their innate superiority, they stop competing for resources. The problem? The damn kids are showing a real good game lately. Cultural victory? What is this then? It's what the kids of Boogie Street are going for. Right under our All right, so I'll, I'll say one thing about this that I'm liking significantly more than Baldur's Gate. Uh, I'm I'm not fully enjoying the the one to three options that don't fully cover every direction I can go. But um, I don't think I get a decision on what direction I'm going. I'm not role playing as something I want to be. I'm role playing as this man. Um. But one thing I'm really liking over Baldur's Gate 3 right now is the way the conversations actually flow a little bit more. It's not, like, so far. Every conversation I've had with people has gone on way longer than I expected it to. It has three dialogue options, usually. And somehow that ends up being 15, 25 minute conversations. Maybe not that long, but like this video is an hour long and all I did was walk up the road, talk to the dude, try and get past him, talk to a couple more dudes. Also, you need to realize the dangers of mixing races. Who knows what might happen if people don't stay in their birthplace? Don't push your luck, Rent. Runt. Bag. I 
Put a tree in it, huh? What do we got here, fellas? Life doesn't need to be a struggle. I'll be with you in a moment, officer. Let me just finish my sandwich. Talk to Angry Hog René first. about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. René, you're a man with a fork in a world of I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath asking about the game. They wouldn't know anyway. They're way... Here we go. Cutscene. You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter. You make it work. A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells... Even the wind, everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and ball. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. Already, your muscles are adjusting to the weight, the nervous system calibrating, until you and the ball have merged into a single, an embodiment of pure motion, a fine-tuned locomotor. Some would still say you're a cop. But I guess we're beyond that now. Wait, what's that have to do with anything? Dude. Is that what you were trying to do this entire time? Was just chuck it? A whole house of shit. It wasn't whole house of shit. The shot was at least 23 meters. Probably 24, and then some. What the hell is your problem? Man, I couldn't tell you. I don't care if you are a cop. You do not just ruin someone's game. Did you vandalize our game, son? We can't flip a tonk with five pool. No, we are not. Good God. Take it easy, René. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No. For oh, sure. I'm definitely not just pushing this man's buttons. Slug. You are a goddamn bull. A fine example you are setting here today, officer. I will remember this. It's okay, officer. Forgotten completely. It was my bull. And I have a spare. Everything is good, and we're ready to assist any way we can. He had a metal ass, heavy ass metal ball in his pocket, just chilling. The lieutenant says nothing, but his face is rigid. It's it's your refusal to take responsibility I don't like. Just talk. It'll smooth things over. Old people like it. Unfortunately, I don't. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. Him, Martinez. The union is in law. But can you really blame them? Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our street. He doesn't know about the crime. Your time is better spent discussing politics. If I knew, I would not be afraid to tell you. 
I simply don't. I'm an old man, not a coward. This is a man. Never said you were. Past, but little present, and almost no future. Ah, yes. King Philip III on his steed. A reminder. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine snorting tyrant. A superpower, feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king, decisively, without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. Revachol would be a different place if more people realized that. Don't get started on that again. What happened, happened. The Karamanir doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates. No one and nothing can change this man's mind. He is as rigid as they come, still in that... Oh, Hall Philip was a big fan of the Purple Nose Candy, the nobility loved so much. Purple but Nose Candy? You can't even take the responsibility for yourself. How could you fathom the responsibility? What year is this supposed to be? Philippian king used cocaine. Of course. Clarity of vision. Philip III was even brought into this world with the help of cocaine. Sure. The court medic administered the dose to his mother when she was in labor. And it is well known that with the help of cocaine, only the purest could go. He was able to connect with higher realms. Higher realms. Of course. Stop talking about cocaine like this right now, guys. I'm not loving it. Making excuses for the king's habits, isn't he? I'm listening. Right. Yes. With the right, I do. Fire from heavy artillery. Why what? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Sadly, no. Should have fought dirty. It was probably a bit more complicated than that. Because this place is a damn beachhead. Have to soften. Yes. The military coordinated amphibious land. He finds your lack of historic knowledge troubling. A sign of mental deterioration. Martinet was used as one of the three footholds in Revachol during Operation Deflo in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Blood ground. You got old René going there, like he isn't hungry enough already. Damn right, son. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. Well, it's your home damn fault. You, we, the coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame. Ne you don't even begin to truly understand the players of the table. Let alone the specific circumstances surrounding them. Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one. I'm sorry it had to be them. After it, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revish. This royal failure weighs heavily on him. Instead, all that is just, holy, but this is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. He doesn't. That was 100 years ago. It was nothing to do with anything. Damn Bruxelles. He was the king we couldn't protect. The Carabineers failed him. And the crown, a true king in both blood and mind, led Revachal before Bruxelles. The suzerain is the king. Soon, 
they will forget everything. It's no use talking to you. You were still in Daddy Forest when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. All you observe is a veteran refusing to let go of the past. This is the uniform. Don't you mean Crystal? You do not speak his name. There's something you missed. You will get to it. Oh, a bag. Excuse me, sir. I'm going to take that bag, please. I don't know if I want to get stuck in another conversation right now. Excuse me. Do you have something better to do than lust for sweet syrupy rum? Not what I'm trying to do. Oh. A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. As you step in, he nods toward the table. And okay, it's definitely not his name. Whatever you do. Please don't call him Garansi Kobet. Please. It's not funny. <laughs> the man puts his cup down and replies something. His left hand drawing arcs in the air. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each. It's almost like music, especially with the sounds of assorted dishes boiling. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't. But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. You don't really know, do you? A vague, blackened image doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay. If you run out of money. You can try. Run some addresses in your head. Six hours and five minutes. Christ. Still door with a prominent you immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue the door does not budge. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. You do? It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? It is quite pretty. I suppose we could look into it as a side investigation. Gark is the person to ask about this, the cafeteria manager. Run in. I need the key to the back door. Can I help you? What? Yes, not Oops. the whole damn union, thank God. Just the nastiest and they come here in the evening. He hates the union. 
but grudgingly recognizes its power over him. So he's directing his frustration at you instead. I don't. I'm simply providing a service, or really facilitating the... We should find out who this Lord Faction is. We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even striking men. If not today, then they'll be here tomorrow. There are these things called days. You sleep between them. He's saying they'll come after you've slept. Just making clear you've got that. Oh yes, that door, sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in the- So, I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though. What? Hmm. You feel like you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. Another thing. Great. I don't know Great what the whirling is. Yes. Do I need to drink the bottles to pick them up? Kim also tries not to look at the pile of tape viscera on the carpet. Oh, I didn't even realize the that. Suitcase on the hat rack, or the potted plant dying in the corner. But it's all just too morbid to ignore. He takes a step toward the door, like he'd like to leave. I can't pick up any of these bottles. That's annoying. Oh, we got a new guy. What other directions haven't I gone? Because I haven't fully committed to this way yet. Sturdy metal door. The door rattles against your knuckles, but there's no response. The door rattles again, but this time you hear an elderly woman's voice. Stop banging on the door! I'm not in the, <laughs> the police. Everyone knows the police don't come round here. No, I already told you. Go check the backyard door. Maybe someone there will. Backyard door. There must be another entrance to the east. Madame, I assure you, we are real police officers. There is no reply. Just faint. Okay, run back around that way. against the cabin top of her sailing boat. Good afternoon, officers. I'm Joyce. Joyce L. Messier. 
I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. What is implied here? That you're a drunk? <laughs> she hasn't actually said it to every drunk in town. It was spoken in jest. I'm glad to see you here. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I... That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. There's a trace of irony in his voice. Mischief, even. The lieutenant is hatching some scheme. I mean, it sounds like he's just being nice. I wish you a swift recovery. It's hard to get a read on her precise disposition, but she appears helpful. Right, let's just uh, start here. We do. I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It, it's a giant undertaking. There was a touch of discomfort there. She wants to merely represent. The Pines core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? No, I have a camera that aims down. I can't see this guy. Billy. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration. The Wild Pines group is one of the original Revisholian Indo tribes. Companies awarded royal monopolies by the king, the suzerain himself. She nods. That's the man who was killed. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. Better not tie the fourth day to the bat's tail, miss. I hope there is something else I can help you. She wants to answer the question. Protocol keeps her from it. <laughs> is what you want to say, but it isn't that easy. Look at that lady. Take a gander. Squint your eyes. Why, yes. Tucked away under that sturdy green raincoat. While dull orange pearls hang from her earlobes. These are the kind eyes of the rich man that seem to say everything is possible. Within reason. Now look at you. You misery-clad sinner. You're poor. Poor as balls. You can't ask this person for money. You're too... Shame? You haven't really been in the presence of gentlefolk either. Oh God, the lieutenant is here too. Do not dishonor the force. As I was saying, if there's any way, why, yes I am. Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? I mean, we are on Le Caillou, are we not? I haven't seen anyone else drive a souped-up Coupri Kenema motor carriage either. Actually, that motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. It's for crossing long distances in the greater Revachol industrial... Neither is this. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Revachol. You need to make this lady admit she's only riding around on this boat because she's rich. Before you do, it would be pertinent to ask other questions. Gather more info on this boat of hers. The boat? No, it is called Cordelati 19 because that's the type of sloop it is. The word it feels strange. Such a beautiful boat deserves a proper name. Okay. How about Cordelachi 19? Why? This bitch. 
because it was manufactured in Revachol East by a company called Cor de Leche, and its hull is 19 paces long. Oh, how original. <sighs> Why Dolores? Hmm. Well, it means nothing to me. I think I'll stick with the factory name. But thank you for the suggestion. My slew? I like it a lot. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the mother we <laughs> I know, man, but... I really do, the lieutenant thinks. Is she thrown off yet? He's looking at the woman, assessing her. Oh my, the E-word. You mean to say that it's a symbol of conspicuous consumption? That I'm a member of the ruling class? Detective, may I remind you that Monsieur Mickey is a professional negotiator? Then what does that say? Does it say, docking reserved for residents of Rue de saint Gislaine, 33A? 33A, this old proletarian haunt here. As I said, plenty of people drive boats of all social strata. Um, yeah. She takes a sip. Okay. Of course. Nothing happened for quite a while. Oh, I finish this. Very good. Game has a lot of reading. Not in a bad way. But seems since there's no combat, it's weird to record this hour and a half, but like I need to get off. It doesn't. No worries. We can just go back to the good. Voila. You're doing it. What'd I do? course how much do you need she's surprisingly nonchalant about this could it be that she somehow knows more about your predicament than she's letting on i'm gonna can i save mid i can't can i save mid can't that's a good sum not too small not fantastically large she removes a few notes and hands them to you whoa whoa did you see how easy that was? Ask her for more. Two <laughs> trains in Money Town. Can you eat honor? So, I hope I didn't just bribe you, officer. It may not be technically illegal under the Emergency Act, but still. You're right, ma'am, that donations are permitted under the Emergency Act, and seemly as it may be, as long as they are properly lodged with the prison. Which he most certainly will do. Now, how else can I help the RCM today? Besides supplementing its salaries. Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines' counteroffer. And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. Oh. 
So you've met him. Has he beguiled you with his inane theories? My colleague has his peculiarities. Let's not go into this particular one just yet. Of course. To each their own. Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. But the strike began in December. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare. The this isn't the first time the Union has gone on strike? Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the Union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more, I guess you could say, aggressive. Ludicrous even. It's meant. There are leaflets everywhere, and banners. What do they- Every worker, a member of the board. Most of the workers probably don't know what that means. Fortunately, they explained it. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about anything, it needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines group. I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position, a hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. And now, people are getting lynched, I hear. Behind the whirling in rags, a disastrous situation if there ever was. Excuse me, from whom did you hear about these lynchings? I first heard it from the boyer at the gate, the one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was, call me manana. Mr. Clare told him to... How did he put it? Fuck off, midget. Go on to his shorter stature, you see. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before. Sounds like usual aggressive posturing. Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity if you can say one thing about him it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first of course not Everard is fantastically corrupt I imagine he has a thick viscous goo where you and I have blood he is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen yes Edgar looks exactly like his brother except for that lazy eye he also talks exactly like Everard does and when one's term as foreman is up the other takes over it's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. The Day Bardeurs Union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the emergent organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The brothers Claire came and transformed it into a... How do you say? A mob. The debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask. I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the debardeurs union is... Of course, officer. I'm glad you asked. 
There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the Union. She disappeared. Disappeared? Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore. Or coming to work. Ever. End of story. Downright haunting. The point of the presentation is, these kinds of things happen around the Clares. Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. Of course. How else can I help? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 50... And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. How curious. Why is that, Detective? Awkwardness washes over the conversation. The woman doesn't like this turn of events. I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? I can't hear you, darling. Speak up, please. Oh, dear. Hmm. I suppose this does explain some of the more... She must have been suspecting something for a while, ma'am. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize. But I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Hang on. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. But yeah, I, I have perks to get me through this. Just float a favor at her. I will be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something very tangible. You're in, but expect her to drive a hard bargain. Reports from inside Terminal B suggest it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinez. The Union controls the terminal, so it goes to reason. The company has tried looking into this matter before, to no avail. Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones. Or, you can recover your badge. Though, if I may be blunt with you, it sounds like that may be a lost cause. Detective, a word in private before we continue. Hey. Yes, you. Word on the street is you're ready to start building communism again. Yes, you're ready to start building communism again. You've built it before. They've built it before. Hasn't really um. worked out yet. But neither has love. Should we just stop building love? Good. We need tender men like you building gargantuan cop. You keep saying things like down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners. Yeah. They are all people who have more than 25 real in their pocket. Literally murder all human beings, regardless of their political beliefs. That kind of stuff. Funky style. Very funky. So tell me. Do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism bill? <laughs> Do we get right down to it? Failure. It's about failure. That's kind of all I do. Yes. Abject failure. Total irreversible defeat on all fronts. I mean, Absolutely vanquished. been sitting here for an hour and a half. And... I'm pretty sure I haven't said more than you will reverse the five, ten minutes of, of, of words. It's just been me sitting here staring at a screen because it's just reading. It's not even all reading. It's just... Against every living thing. Against every human alive. I'm, I'm getting my bearings, so. Matter failed to bend to human will. Now get to work. 
comrade. Oh yeah. Get the firing squads and the animal weapons ready. Advanced race theory. Oh. Everything is calm in the eye of the race storm. Your mind is lucid and bright. The mind bending phylogenetics appear more distant and to be fair, a little ridiculous. The great race mystery has cleared up. All that's left to do is verbalize your thoughts. Go and talk to Measurehead about your newly found insights. Very cool. All right, well, let me talk to the homie. Where can I help you? Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance and, you know, not volunteer us to be her henchman. <laughs> this woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced bag all along, or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her hands. He doesn't let it show, but there is a limit to how much the consequences of your unprofessional behavior can cost the investigation. No, if there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are saddened with the union, or that we are on their tail. We'd never hear the end of it. What I propose is, we ask her, then we investigate, briefly. But do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done and demand for her information on the Yinji. You're back? Good. What can I help you with? It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samar and Isola into Revachol, with the Union's blessing. Ingredients for what, ma'am? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Jeez. Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. Yes, but you won't get anything out of Evrat and the top. The handoff. The motor lorries at the roundabout. Precisely. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. You'll be indebted to her, in a way. But one step ahead of the Union, in another. How do you think they're financing this strike? There are thousands of unpaid dock workers going strong for the fourth month straight. There was a shakedown of local businesses preceding the strike. Many were squeezed to bankruptcy to fund it. With all due respect to these desert cacti, the contents of a few cash registers cannot provide for 2,000 men. The Precisely. Smuggled out of that very gate at night most likely, then loaded onto lorries and driven to Jamrock. It sounds like she tried looking into it herself, though she's clearly not the type your typical lorry man would confide in. Yes? I am very sad to hear that, officer. If you change your mind, please let me know. In the meantime, I'll still try to assist you in any way I can. This disagreement is peanuts compared to what happens if you fail. Of course, detective. I need to find my badge. Um, this is definitely um, where I have to call it. This is um, uh, 
I'm, I'm gonna see what happens because if I get copyright claimed again just for playing this game the only song that's playing is that little soft horn playing in the background and occasionally something else so if it's anything it's those but we'll see um I might switch this to live stream stuff and play it less frequently simply for the fact that two days in a row I'm sitting here f just aim mindlessly staring at a screen I could be playing just some more action games and just getting through my repertoire a little faster we'll see maybe I'll get a good day session where I can make a big jump in this game Really get some momentum and understand what's going on. Because, like, I zone out. I, I changed the font. Because I was thinking maybe it was the font. The world is super interesting. Just the names are so... Obscure. I guess they're going for, like, a middle European setting. Because there's a lot of French people. Or at least French-speaking people. There's a few other accents I've caught along the way, but not exclusively, you know? Um, I still don't know the confines of the timer on the bottom right, and that it moves at a semi-realistic pace. Um, yeah, this, this game is, is weird. I'm not loving it yet, and I hate that, but I'm also not going to try and force it, you know? So I'll see what YouTube does to the video, and that will decide if it's going to live stream or if it's staying a video format, and I'll just have to find something to play in between, like maybe every other day, just to, um... Just to stay, stay awake or something. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I should just stop cutting into my sleep time and uh, get a full eight hours occasionally. Um, I got one more day of work. I'll probably be up late tomorrow. Maybe then I'll start like Gotham Knights. No, I can't start Gotham Knights. I don't know. We'll have to figure something out though because I want to love this game. I want to play it on camera. Maybe I just don't need a webcam for this one. I can I can do the Baldur's Gate method and just talk into a mic. It might be the move. In fact, that just doing that makes me a little bit more comfortable doing this cuz why why is my face even here? I'm just Staring at the screen. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. It, it's distracting me. Honestly, I can only uh, wonder what's what's going on for you guys. Not there's there's significant amount of you at the moment. Either way. It's a little too late. I still need to type up the description. Um, thank you. This is Disco Elysium. Don't call me Ted. I'll try and see you tomorrow. If not the day after, 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 if not the day after.